Hello friends, I am Ram Lakshmanan. So here today we are going to learn about JVM memory model. Okay. See, you, you guys have seen, you have seen this property XMX. So this property you might have seen it defines the maximum heap size of your JVM. Say so you can set it to 2 gig, 4 gig or whatever the size. So if you set this size to be 2 gig, will your Java process, so if you, look, if you open the tools like top or APM tools and look for your Java process memory, will it go beyond this maximum size? Let me ask the question again. Say if you are going to define your XMX as 2 GB, that is your maximum heap size as 2 GB and now you go to your, you launch your application and now you are looking at the top for the Java process, will it go beyond 2 GB? That's my question. See when I ask this question in a lot of training session, people say it will not go beyond 2 GB. But actual answer is it will go beyond 2 GB. So let's try to understand why it will go beyond 2 GB. Okay. So when you take Java heap, it basically has two regions, end generation and then a old generation. Whenever, say suppose in your application, someone writes a code, something like this, say new car. This will create an object this car object. Initially this car object is created in this young generation. It's going to be created in this young generation. And if this object is going to live for a long period, if it's going to be long lived, then this object gets promoted from this young generation to the old generation. Moves from here and then it comes here. But most of the objects are short lived objects. I would say there is a statistic something like 80 percentage or more than 80 percentage of your objects are short lived objects. So they get created here and then they die down in the end generation itself. They never get promoted to the old generation. So when someone defines XMX, basically what he is defining is, is defining the size of this end generation and old generation alone. So this is what XMX is. So it's only defining the n generation and old generation size. But after this n generation old generation, there is also a meta space. So what is meta space? Meta space is the space where JVM stores the, stores the metadata information to run the application, like your class definitions, like your method definitions. All those things goes into this meta space. And this is defined by the property called meta space or max meta space. So say suppose if you are defining this to be 2 GB, this max meta space you can define it as something like a 256 MB. That means this is 2 GB plus this 256 MB. It's going to go beyond this what you have defined as XMX. But it doesn't stop there. Java application creates a lot of threads to process the incoming request. So where are the threads stored? Are they stored in this end generation? Or are they stored in the old generation or in the meta space? The answer is they are not stored anywhere in this three gen anywhere in these three regions. They are stored outside. There is this additional space called as others. So in this region, there is no name given to it. But so for our discussion, we will call as others.
So in, this is the region where threads are stored, your application threads. One. So threads takes up memory. Say you can define your thread size by this property called as XSS. XSS. So there you can define what is the size of your just one thread. Say suppose you are defining it as 1 MB. So if our application is creating like a 200 threads, then it's going to take 200 MB more. And then the second thing what is going to be stored in this other region is to do the garbage collection. Garbage collection needs its own memory to keep the pointers to references and all those things. So those are stored in this region. GC. Your Java process opens a lot of socket buffers, like for inbound connections. Say for what other customer sends you a transaction, it's open inbound connections. And your application now talks with other systems. So for it has to open connections. So for those connections, those socket buffers are created and they are go, goes in this others region. And then the file descriptors, you're opening the file, closing the file. So those also takes in memory. So they go into this, uh, in this others region. So I'll say socket buffer slash file descriptors. And actually the code what the developer writes is not the code what actually is executed by the JVM at runtime. JVM does a lot of optimizations to give you a better performance. For us, it does a lot of JIT compilations. So those compilation also takes up memory. So they go in here into this others region. So I'm just going to say compilation. Fifth. Say if your application is using JNI, see uh, most modern application doesn't use JNI. So JNI is a mechanism through which your Java contacts or makes a call to your C or C++ process which is running outside. So if you're using JNI, that also takes up memory. So though that goes in here into this others region. So thus, when you define XMX, you are only defining the portion of this region, portion of your memory, which is end generation and old generation. On top of it, there's metaspace. On top of it, there is this others region, which has all these things. So they all take up memory. So thus, your entire Java process, when you look in top, it will go beyond what you define here in this XMX. Okay. And uh, so you might have a question, is there any way that I can limit the size of this others region? Is there any way that I can put a max cap? Okay, here there is XMX, here is max metaspace. Is there anything that I can define here to define a cap? Unfortunately, there is no such one single parameter which can define you. But we will be talking about more about this memory optimization and memory model in the upcoming sessions. So if you like this uh, video clip, you are welcome to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for watching this uh, video clip.